It's your boy again. No, not not that one. It's, it's your boy again. Black Eric Foreman, aka dude whose Bluetooth no longer works. We're gonna make it work. It's Sean C, and we're back in here with another first review of the Suicide Boys Part 3. For those of you who don't know and want to call me out on my titles, I call them first reactions because this is my first time listening to any of these songs, and this is the Part 3 of that first time experience. I know it sounds dumb to split up your first time doing things, but it is what it is. A couple of you guys been blowing me up telling me recently hey man if you don't get on that you need to you, you need to jump off a small building and hurt your ankles you need to have your phone cracked i'm gonna make you show up to work two minutes late just the worst things in the world that can be done to you people have been telling me that they're gonna do to me so i figured i might as well do this to avoid any kind of a uh, situation that might occur really think i'm playing sean c is just legit with the shits like I, I will not i'm not i'm not here to play game i will show up to your house uninstall windows 10 and reinstall windows xp like i'm really i'm not about the game another time that we're doing this we do not have a list but today i promise i will be listening to the denzel curry track i pro i've been waiting all this time it's time i'm gonna do it it should be the first one i listen to but i'm not gonna do that because why spoil it so early first track we're gonna check out is south side south suicide Triple S featuring Puya. I like that that tone in the background. Kind of humming this melody. Oh God, I knew it was coming. Oh, don't do it. Oh! Wait, don't put the Glock there. That's a, that's the safety hazard. Side to a side piece, self hope. Say you get money, but your numbers don't show. You a liar. You gotta get it how you live. Tell that bitch you better get up on my pants. Pick a breath, that's all. Face to a nosy little girl. That's all. Look at him. My boy. You can hate me. 1,000 bitches, they all wanna date me. I mean, that's not impossible, but you know. The inner hater inside of me is telling me that's you know that's not true. Very good track. I love the the subtle ooh, that part of the song, the melody. I don't know if that is an actual voice, but it sounds like there's someone in the background giving this very soothing, um, almost angelic feeling to the track, as if it's a feeling you can only get if you're from this area. I like the way Puya always has a different take on the tracks than Suicide Boys because they always have a a very, I guess, distorted tone that they like to use when they're tackling these tracks. And Puya never seems to uh, gravitate towards that style of rapping, which I like because it adds another element to the song, makes it a little bit more versatile, makes it a little bit more enjoyable, um, something that makes it a little bit less predictable and repetitive. The bass, the bass, you know, you know I like that bass, man. I'm all about that bass, no treble. Next track, Oh Panya. Obama, Obama, Obama. I, 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 I legit typed in Obama just now, and they gave me Obama. What are you doing? That bass is too heavy. I can't hold all that. No pause. It sounds like a Shaq Fu level. I don't. I don't think I've ever been this hard before. I told you I'm sexually attracted to bass. I told you this. God, why? You know, um, just a speaker knocker. That's all that track is. I wouldn't say it's very impressive when I think about the lyrics uh, behind it because it's nothing that they haven't done before. And also, uh, they're literally just talking about what they'll do to people. Uh, the effect that the drugs that they've been using has on them. I like how at the end, he kind of regrets, you know, hitting the blunt. Like, uh, maybe I shouldn't have done that because now I feel like I'm about to just puke my guts out. But if you want to listen to a, a song and literally take nothing from it pretty much, while at the same time having extreme bass to listen to, it's not bad. Would I come back to it? Probably not. Oh, what? Nothing. What? Oh, uh, next track. Kill Yourself Part 3. <laughs> This, this track sucks in a in a in a 
in an emotional way, not that it's bad, because instrumentally it sounds great, but the, 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 the subject matter is really somber and it's pretty sad, it's pretty depressing. I like music where it's not all, I'm, I'm a dark person naturally, so I don't, I'm never usually a fan of like that, uh, the Chance the Rapper type music where, you know, oh my god, everything's so happy and sunshiny. I want a really realistic portrayal of what majority of the world uh, tends to go through on a day-to-day -day basis, not this uh, fake utopia that you want to promote. Not no diss against Chance, it's just, that's not my style, that's not my cup of tea. Nothing wrong with positivity, I just want a very realistic and accurate portrayal of your own emotion, not what you want the world to be. Just tell me how it is, and that's what they're doing on this track, and I love it. God damn, is it this serious? Say, if life's a game of inches, then my dick's the fucking biggest. Says how he wants to basically take what he's been given, the life he's been given, which is essentially his dick, and ram it into the world. And I guess that's to say that he wants to deliver something to the world, and I would assume it's this message. And if that message is to give the most accurate portrayal, or I won't say the most accurate because not everyone goes through this, but People who like music want to hear your story, they want to hear your experience, so if you want to have the world twitching because of the story you've given them, that's fine too. And they also have this bass even with a song that's very somber. It's like a, it's like a message that you want to listen to not only because you can bob your head to it, which is, you know, due to the addicting bass, but a message you can actually appreciate because he's coming from a realistic point of view. Uh, next one, let's do a girl named Cool in a pack of drool. Oh. Oh, don't do this. He's doing it. Drive a dagger into my heart right now. Put it on the oven first. Toast that bitch. Don't. He's doing it. They're taking too long to come in. They're taking too long to come in. Oh, yes. This shit is so jazzy. I'm drunk. You gotta, you gotta calm down. So I just listened to the track again because that, that, because it's that horn in the, in the. I'm gonna be talking about this forever with them, but the bass, not, a, not a bass, a, a bass. Get it right, editor. I'm listening like heavily to the lyrics. They, they say so much so quickly. They don't really give you a time, you know, enough time to digest it all the time because their delivery changes up so frequently in all of these tracks he's saying he's talking to your girl and basically uh ask her if he could bum a cig he says yeah that's cool but she just needs an excuse to talk to and this is basically a track about somebody else's chick wanting to be his i think they take a little bit too long to come into the song like i get that this is a very um different instrumental you know it's not something you usually hear in an underground rap you know it's very eccentric it's very explosive almost it gives you a lot before they even come into the track and by the time they come into the track I've been listening to this for a certain amount of time already so it's harder for me to appreciate them over the beat because i'm listening to the beat more than i'm listening to them we're gonna stop it here but i am gonna get denzel ultimate suicide featuring my boy denzel you not do that again scare the sh ultimate for denzel suicide for suicide boys you guys have been telling me this track is crazy so my expectations are all the way up here. If you don't meet my expectations, I'm giving both of y'all an L on Twitter. I'm ready. Just do it. Okay. Are those bees? Oh no, you cannot spit bars on this. I, I, you just said demonic logic. First of all, I rebuke you. Second of all, I might vomit from popping narcotics. What? Stop doing that then, okay? You're gonna ruin your inside. Thank you. Hell is dark, and so is my heart, but he's switching like the nigga with the Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Oh, and all oh god! Why you ride bikes better off in the car, bitch?
in some off it. Snap, then I'm back in my soft shit. We go to the market in the hood with a hoodie looking like I'll die. Let's stay in my face. Push it to the limit. I can't see what I'm about to do. Dog, wait, what did he just say? What did you just say? I wish in it. Like Cosmo and Wanda. Call that boy Timmy Turner. Oh my god! He's still going. He's filling me up with this. Whatever. What the fuck? The very beginning, Denzel says, My. I think he says my white tea is black, or wait, no, that doesn't make sense. My tea is black, hell is dark, so is my heart, um, but these dudes switching up like the, like a nigga with the Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I'm gonna have to go to Genius for this next one because he says shots in the dark, I'm an excellent something. This man says shots in the dark, I'm an excellent marksman. No, you can't, you can't do that. How do you do, like, do you have, like, you got a perk for that? Like, I didn't know we had real life perks, like, where'd you get it? Where'd you buy it? I have no complaints for that track at all rhymey they carry the extreme underground feeling it's 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 less emo and more gothic i mean i mean ruby i believe is his name ruby in the beginning is just literally just screaming it, it does represent what the track is it's like this another piece of mental instability and i've said this in my first review of them they're all different pieces of the exact same cocaine and i still believe that by the way they went off on this track the track in the back is so sinister to match their thoughts like they're really rolling deep not playing any games you'd be hard pressed to find this kind of content from other artists that aren't underground like this is who you go to when you want some re something real to listen to, you know, you don't want to just hear people uh, talking about the the life when uh, they're trying to they're trying to profit from it. And I get that they need to make hype music, but at the same time, this isn't popularized music. They're talking about this because they know they have a core fan base that wants to hear something enjoyable, not just oh let me just you know this is if you want to say anything this is cultural appropriation with the with the pop stars and and what all the other artists who want to talk about guns in the street and what they'll do to people and about drugs that in my opinion is music appropriation you're taking experiences that you didn't even live and putting them in popular music just to make the track sound good when these guys are putting it in the track because they know their audience and they know what gets them out of their seat not just because it sounds good or it sounds cool like it feels authentic with them overview of these tracks that i've listened to so far oh my god is my mic off oh god it's about to die they are crazy they are insane they sexually abuse the bass which is something i love enzo curry on that final track just tied together the listening experience entirely for me they have their own formula um and i like the way they tackle a lot of these tracks it's very hard to try to give an opinion on you know the group uh when you're listening to tracks randomly you know you're coming in and out at different points of their career not listening to a full body of work so i want to keep the critique to somewhat of a minimum um there are still critique worthy things like the structure of the songs and you know how short they can be and how distorted their voice sound kind of represent that underground feeling or that feeling that you know they're smothered in either their thoughts or their emotions while i do like a large portion of these tracks they also have a formula they have a style they have a a way that they tend to uh tackle each track although they have crazy amounts of versatility and their flow switches and their cadence is crazy they still have their own blueprint that they tend to follow that shows up pretty frequently within their music as well i've kind of seen that after hearing them for the third time it's it's good music man and and, and for it to be underground they're not really you know taking these gimmicks and screaming the entire track if you were really um invested into this group i i would assume you would go into their songs with a lyric sheet um that's probably something i should start doing but i like hearing whatever i hear and then you know tackling that as opposed to trying to say oh man i need i need to know everything that they're saying like you really don't because half of what they say is for entertainment and the other half of what they say is pretty much for um you know their audience that want to listen to their mindset their mental state project reaction will be coming within the next few weeks so look out for that but i've enjoyed my listening experience denzel curry they need to do some more tracks together gonna be listening to that one heavily heavy rotation for that one and i'll see you guys next time it's been sean c i hope you enjoyed the video if you did go ahead and leave a thumbs up if you didn't suck my and i'll see you next time peace oh my legs are weak my legs are weak